star is a great middle of the road star. It really is in more ways than one. Not only is its size pretty much right smack in the middle, there are some stars that are quite a bit smaller and there are some that are larger. For example, red giant stars are about 700 to 1,000 times the diameter of our sun while M dwarf stars, the very, very small ones, are only just a fraction of the diameter of our sun. So it's a very good middle star in that way. Stars clearly form in very dense, cold clouds of dust and gas. And that cloud, at some point, under its own gravity, will start shrinking, it will start collapsing. These clouds are actually getting dense enough inside to pull together an entire star from the material of the cloud. So obviously there's a lot of debris, a lot of dust being pulled together. At a certain point, material will become so dense that it will be opaque and radiation will be trapped inside. This is the stage where we call this a protostar, or you know, this is a star to be born. These inner parts are gonna continue to compress to a point where the temperature at the center uh, is gonna reach a very high value of order 10 million degrees Kelvin. And it is at that point that nuclear reactions start and a star is actually born. Like a baby of any species, an infant star has its growth work cut out for it. We're pretty sure that it takes at least several million years to go from just that small contraction inside the cloud to a fully formed solar system. It is shorter for massive stars and longer for low mass stars. For a star like the sun, uh, the process of star formation takes of order 50 million years or thereabouts. And what you see on the sun will surprise you. It's alive with a cellular, granular look. The surface of the sun is constantly moiling and churning like the surface of a pot of oatmeal or something. The largest convection cells that we see just at a quick glance are about the size of the Earth. They come and go once a day. Material comes up, spreads out into an area about the size of the Earth and falls back underneath. Meanwhile, inside those super granules, those large convection cells, smaller bubbles called granules are constantly forming. The granules are about the size of Texas and they appear on the surface, spread out and submerge again in about five minutes. So it's a tremendous energetic process. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. A roiling cauldron is our local stellar representative. Those little black sunspots? Well, they're neither little nor black. They can be 10 times the size of Earth and 50 times as bright as the moon. And while they are cooler than the surrounding surface of our fiery solar furnace, they're still about 4,000 degrees Celsius. The sunspot is the surface manifestation of the magnetic field that causes the active region and the solar storm. So in some sense, the larger the sunspot, the more powerful of a storm we can expect. No star burns forever. So where is the sun in its life cycle? The sun is, uh, you know, is, has this midlife crisis, basically, stage. Our sun is going to live about 10 billion years, and it is just now about, you know, 4.7 or thereabouts. So it's, it's literally in the middle of its life. So it has another about 5 billion years to go. Even the stars are not forever. Most go simply and quietly into the night. Now, at some point, it exhausts the hydrogen. What does it do? Its core starts contracting because remember gravity is always there. It turns out that at the same time the envelope is actually expanding, the star becomes what we call a red giant. This envelope becomes so extended and so loosely bound to the star and the star at that point is so luminous that it manages to push away the outer parts. That core at that point actually illuminates these outer parts and causes them to fluoresce. And these are the objects that we call planetary nebulae. And that core which remains in the middle, that is the thing that is going to contract and become what we call a white dwarf. So, after a long, stable and distinguished career, 
our sun and others of its type will retire in rather unspectacular fashion. Space.com.